Okay, welcome back. This is part three of the lecture on ancient, the art of ancient civilization. And we were just wrapping up talking about the Amarna period and ancient Egypt and why it changed art and made art a little bit um, less formal, still stylized, but stylized um, maybe in a looser and uh, more curvilinear way and less about permanence. And just before I, I head to uh, ancient Mesopotamia, I do want to just mention that because of, for various reasons, both including because of uh, the funerary practices, we have a lot of beautiful, small, gorgeous, intimate objects from ancient Egypt, and they they give us such a, a beautiful picture of what the life of um, ancient Egyptians uh, possibly could have been like. So ancient Mesopotamia, um, starting pretty much roughly about the same time as um, ancient Egypt, that uh, somewhere around 3200 BCE, um, we have the really the big big towns become city-states. And um, it's, we're not exactly clear as to when, but and the ancient Sumerians were living in uh, in the, the southern part of Mesopotamia. I guess first we should cover where is Mesopotamia. So Mesopotamia is um, referred to as the land between two rivers, right? Um, and that's uh, the land between the Tigris and the Euphrates. It's sometimes also referred to as the Fertile Crescent, um, although that actually is a slightly bigger region because that includes the Levant. And it's this um, large region in the Middle East where um, especially this this place between the river of the Tigris and the Euphrates, um, it was possible to have large cities because with irrigation, you could farm and produce enough food for large groups of people. And there's a lot to talk about with ancient Mesopotamia. In some ways, a lot more to talk about than with ancient Egypt because uh, just a lot more happened, a lot, a lot of different people, a lot of uh, different groups of people, um, but it's very complicated as well. So I'll try to keep it pretty brief and just mostly sum it up. Um, the very first people who lived in uh, ancient Mesopotamia were known as the Sumerians. And so, and all of these are examples of Sumerian artwork. And well, let's just for a moment talk about the standard of Ur. So the standard of Ur is a, a it's a box basically, and it has two sides. One side is the war side. I believe this is the war side here, and the other side is the the peace side. So it was, was probably an object owned by a great king. So in the peace side, it's a long procession of people coming to see the king and to bring him offerings, and on the war side, it's a long procession. Um, of warriors off to war. And that kind of, in some ways, sums up a lot of uh, some of the differences in, in ancient Mesopotamia, which is that uh, there was a lot more emphasis on uncertainty, a lot more emphasis on, on war and conquest, and, um, and there was a lot, a lot more conflict. And because of that, I think another thing that kind of represents some of the difference would be these uh, votive figures here that are all um, praying upward with their extra large eyes. And once again, I think they represent us um, a diff one of the differences between ancient Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt is this sense of anxiety and uncertainty. The sense that the world is an uncertain place, that um, it's a, a fateful place where, you know, uh, great things could happen, but terrible things could happen, and um, and the sense that you are at the the whims of forces beyond your control, whether you call those um, the gods or or other, um, they certainly called those forces the gods that ruled them, and so as I said, uh, ancient Mesopotamia was originally populated um, mostly by in the southern part by these people known as Sumerians, but they lived side by side with this other group of people, um, a group of people who spoke a Semitic language, who we now call the Akkadians. And although the word Akkad is actually 
the name of an ancient Sumerian city, so that's kind of complicated. But we call them Akkadians because that's where uh, Sargon said he was from. So just go with that. Um, and these two groups of people lived kind of side by side um, and spoke two different languages, but um, to a large degree, kind of these two cultures kind of support each other. But at a certain point, Akkadian became the more dominant culture. And then with certain rulers, uh, especially Sargon of Akkad, um, dom you know, conquered over most of uh, Mesopotamia. And then other people started to move in as well. Um, for a brief period, the, there was a period called the Neo-Sumerian period where Sumerians actually, uh, the Sumerians of the southern city-states, uh, reasserted their power. Um, but then there were new people who moved in. They were um, Amorites, and they founded a city um, in the northern part of ancient Mesopotamia, or what was then the most northern part, uh, Babylon. And with the rise of Babylon, uh, we have... Um, in some ways, it's a kind of a return to some of the Sumerian ideas of rule, but um, also in some ways just a continuation of the Akkadian empire, or the Akkadian idea of empire and of king of kings. One of the things that's really interesting to, to make as a comparison is the sense of piety that we have here in this ancient Sumerian, you know, these praying figures, and then a different kind of piety here, right? The god is seated, and so the god is much larger than uh, Hammurabi, who's receiving the information from from his god. But at the same time, right, um, he is because he's standing, and the god is seated. They are eye to eye. In fact, actually, Hammurabi's eyes are just a little bit higher, and which is a very interesting um, place to put this uh, this great king. This, by the way, contains the the laws, Hammurabi's code, is written on the side of this uh, stele, and then at the top is carved these two figures. I didn't really talk about um, the victory stele of Naram Sin. We'll talk about this one a little bit more when we discuss uh, relief sculpture and carving, um, but for right now I just want to, and we'll also talk about it in terms of scale, notice how large Naram Sin is compared to the other figures in there. Um, and notice how he's you know, striding up and the whole thing kind of leads you upwards. All right, was there anything else I wanted to say? Um, okay, in my next lecture, I'm gonna talk about the end of the Bronze Age, the Bronze Age collapse, and then we'll talk about the empires that came after that. Okay, thank you.